With arrays, we had a variable that contained a collection of information, and we referred to each piece of information in that array using its index number. Objects are also a collection of information, but they re we refer to each piece of information using a name, essentially. So let's create a new object here. Let's call it uh, Iguanodon. And the difference here is that objects start with curly braces instead of square brackets. Now inside of our object, each, each piece of information needs to be named. So let's come up with a, you know, a name for this piece of information. Let's call it name. And then we put a colon and then the information that it contains. So iguanodon. So this I've made up here. This is just the name of this piece of information. It's kind of like a variable inside of another variable. If I wanted to add another piece of information, I could put a comma and then let's say um, height. So that would be 13 meters. All right, and then I could keep going. Weight, uh, three tons. Okay, so I've got this object here and it has three pieces of information inside it. If I wanted to get one of those piece of, piece of information out, I refer to the variable name iguanodon, and then I just put a dot and get out the information I want, like that. So that would retrieve the word iguanodon. So let's put it in a console.log so we can see it working. All right, we'll go back and refresh, and you can see we got out iguanodon. So we could also do the same thing here console.log iguanodon.wait, and that would get the new piece of information out. Lastly, we could add some new information into our object. So iguanodon dot, uh, let's say, diet equals herbivore. Okay, now let's just do a console.log here so we can see our new object. And I'll refresh, and you can see here, here's our new object. It now has name, height, weight, and diet. Because all I've done is I've just set that, that property of the object to a new value. So really, an object is kind of like a collection of variables. That's what it is, essentially. So where an array is just a collection of information, and those things have a specific order to them, an object like this with curly braces is just a collection of other variables, and the order isn't really that important. So we have an object here. Let's create a couple more. I'll create another one for Spinosaurus. I'll just fill in some information here. All right, and I'll do one more here, um, Microraptor. So I've got three different objects now. I've got Iguanodon, Spinosaurus, and Microraptor, and they're all contained, or they're all different objects with the same pieces of information. So I'd like to use them, and what I'd like to do is I'd actually like to spit out their information into the browser here. So what I can do is, now that I know about arrays, I could make a new variable, let's call it dinos, and it's going to be equal to an array, and the array will, be, will contain Iguanodon, Spinosaurus, and Microraptor. So now my array is actually a collection of objects, so each of these things are inside of my array. Now that I know that it's an array, I can do a loop over it. So dinos.foreach function item like this. And so I'm looping over the three items in the array, and I can spit the information out for them. So I know that each item in the array is actually an object. So if I was to just write uh, document.write item.name like that and refresh you'd see I'd loop through the all the objects and spit out their names but I want to make it a little bit uh, nicer so let's put these into h2s so we'll put the names into h2s like this all right so there we go there's all the names next out I think I'd like to spit out a uh, description list. So we'll go create a DL here. Make sure to put the closing one. And now in here we can do document document.write. Let's create the DT. So the first piece of information we want to spit out is the height. So we'll go like that, DT. 
and then we'll add on the DD here with item dot height. All right, so we're spitting out the height now for the DL. There we go. There's all the heights for the different dinosaurs. We'll do it again for the weight. All right, we're spitting out the weights for all the dinosaurs. And lastly, we'll spit out the diets. All right, so there we go. We've we've spit that information out. Now we could take this one step further and why not make this into a function that we could reuse. So right here, we'll create a function called write dinos. It's equal to a function and it's going to take in a variable called dinos like this. All right, let's indent this so it looks all nice. And here's our function down here. Now we have our function, we have this array here. I'm going to get rid of it. We'll just delete our variable. So we now have this function. I'll refresh and you can see it's not working because we haven't called it yet. But let's go down here and call our function called write dinos and we'll just pass our array directly into it like that. So that will write out those three dinosaurs for us inside of a function. And if we had a different array of different dinosaur objects, it would spit those out for us. So objects here are a collection of information, a collection of variables, and we can do lots of things with those objects, combining them together uh, with loops and if statements and functions and all that fun stuff.